Hello and welcome to the program Sula's Big Adventures with me Sula. This episode is about traveling on a plane with a telescope. This is the iconic Mead ETX Maxutov Cassegrain Telescope. More specifically, this is my Mead ETX 90 millimeter telescope. This telescope was made in Torrance, California in the United States. I recently rescued this telescope from a relative who was abusing it. This relative had obtained a degree in meteorology, and I thought since the, he enjoyed looking at the clouds, he would also enjoy looking at the stars, but I was wrong. So when I gave this telescope to him a few years ago, he never told me he had no interest in the night sky. Don't ever assume that just because somebody's interested in looking at clouds that they're interested in the stars and never give anyone a telescope unless they ask you for it. After a while, I asked this relative, not related by blood, <laughs> if he had been able to use it. And he told me, no, it's too light polluted. And I said, well, you can get a light pollution filter. And moreover, light pollution really doesn't matter for looking at the moon or the planets. Then he said, well, actually, it was in the hallway and the wind blew it over and broke the eyepiece. And I said, well, you can get another eyepiece. And he said, well, actually, it broke the eyepiece holder. I was speechless. I, I had owned this telescope for over 25 years and taken it all over the place and nothing had ever happened to it. After I made that video comparing my Mead LX85 to a Celestron Nexstar 8, I mentioned that I had owned a Mead in the 1990s, but I realized I couldn't remember what size it was or the model. Um, the telescope in my mind was much bigger. I thought it was four inches, but I just couldn't remember. So I called up this relative, not related by blood, to ask about the telescope. And that's when I found out he had been storing it in a storage room. And y'all know how I feel about telescopes and closets. So I demanded the telescope back. After a tense exchange between him, his wife, and me, in which they accused me of being an Indian giver, <laughs> I marched over there and I demanded it back. And that's when I found out how badly he had damaged it. This time, he said the telescope fell over in the storage room, so that whole wind blowing it over story had been fabricated. And when I asked where the eyepiece was, he said he didn't know. <laughs> he had neglected this telescope in the storage room with no cover over the diagonal, which was now coated in dust. The side was cracked and one of the holders was also cracked. I won't go into how upset I was. I was surprised when I finally got it back to realize that it was actually just a little 90 millimeter telescope. It was tiny and so cute. How could anyone abuse it like that? It's like somebody who abuses their own dog. I cleaned the diagonal mirror the best I could, and then I set out to look for a replacement eyepiece holder. This telescope has a built-in flip mirror that allows you to flip the diagonal up for viewing through the top or flipping it out of the way for viewing straight through the back or attaching the camera to the back. I couldn't find a replacement eyepiece holder, but I did find a diagonal on sale on eBay that he claimed would fit all Mead ETX telescopes. While the threads are the correct size to screw onto the back, it won't uh, securely hold the diagonal. So that didn't work. So I took the piece off of it, which unscrews, and I made it into a kind of makeshift eyepiece holder. And then I put an eyepiece in it and I took it outside and incredibly, after being abused for over two years and knocked to the ground, I could bring it to focus and I looked at the moon with it. It works, amazing. So now that I have my Mead ETX back, now I remember why I bought it. My first telescope was an Orion four inch reflector bolted to a rickety equatorial mount with a plastic focuser and a plastic six by 30 finder scope on a wooden tripod. I could never find anything with that telescope, so I decided I needed more aperture, and I went out and I bought my second telescope, an Orion 8-inch Dobsonian. I loved that telescope. I took it all over the place. I would throw it in the car, and because I live in a major metropolitan area with over 7 million people that's heavily light polluted, I would have to find somewhere to, with dark skies 
For 30 years, I've been searching and searching for suitable dark sky sites to observe in, and I would drive for hours to Yosemite National Park, Sequoia National Park, the Eastern Sierra, and beyond, looking for dark skies. Then in the mid-1990s, I discovered these incredibly dark skies in southern Utah, and from that date forward, I would go once or twice a year to southern Utah. But since that's so far, I would always have to fly on a plane to get there. At first, I'd just take a pair of binoculars, but I longed to have a telescope with me for those incredibly dark skies. So in the mid-1990s, that's when I decided to buy my first travel telescope. I looked at this Mead ETX. In those days, you could go into a telescope store and look at telescopes, and I thought it would be perfect. You can buy it as a go-to telescope, but I didn't have a way to power the go-to mount while on vacation in another state. And also, I didn't think that the tripod and go-to mount would fit on the plane. But the top would, in fact, the little base that this telescope comes on makes it function as a tabletop telescope, perfect for a picnic table or on a camera tripod. So I bought just the telescope and not the go-to mount. And for years, I would put this little telescope into a backpack like this one, and I'd take it on board as a carry-on and put it in the seat in front of me to keep an eye on it. It worked great, and nothing bad ever happened to it. I took it with me and it gave me great joy to have this little telescope for my jaunts to the dark skies of southern Utah. In the last episode, I demonstrated one way to take a telescope on a plane by using a pelican case. So that's one way to travel with a telescope on a plane. And this would be the second way. <laughs> Put a little meat ETX in a backpack and carry it on to the plane as a carry-on. It worked great. In the next episode, though, I'm going to go over another way to take a telescope on a plane and get a little more aperture than 90 millimeters. Actually, six inches of aperture, which is what I am interested in. My next telescope after this Mead ETX was a six inch refractor. And after looking through that telescope for several years, I really have my heart set on taking at least a six inch telescope with me on my next adventure to a dark sky site via plane. So stay tuned, and in the next episode, I'll go over yet another way to travel with a telescope on a plane. Until then, get outside and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off. <laughs>